Hey everyone, how you doing today? Thought I'd take a look at the workshop. This is a kind of a special little video because I missed uh, the week of Christmas. So I'm looking at some creations that were from that particular week. So a little bit older, not too old though. Um, and I just thought I'd uh, finally get around to uh, looking at all these. And apologize, I didn't look at it uh, on the uh, the week of Christmas here. So the very first creation here, this is the uh, remote. Remora by Raccoona and a uh, cool looking ship. Uh, this is a SV. It uh, kind of looks like it would be a, a kind of a almost like a SV dropship type of uh, configuration here with the uh, the four large like thruster housings on the uh, corners of the ship um, and a big flat surface on the top which I gotta assume would be a landing area for smaller uh, vehicles or uh, SVs or HVs and I, I, I believe that's kind of what this ramp here is for to help uh, get HVs to the to the roof which is uh, really cool also I like the uh, the color scheme here too kind of a, a midnight blue with a gray uh, gray trim some other uh, I think there's some other shades in there too and then you've got the uh, more cyan uh, texture lighting in the uh, in the works here too which looks really good together I gotta say and yeah, quite a bit of room on top of there too it's actually a pretty big ship for an SV yeah, really cool a lot of uh, a lot of detail work going on in here too with all the all the uh, side uh, framework and things like that uh, going on into the mix here yeah, very cool. Looks like a little uh, workshop here that you got to bring down with you. I'm wondering if that's the case. Let's uh, let me uh, adjust the lighting real quick here, and I'm going to jump inside and see what's uh, going on in the interior here. Oh, looks like we got a lot of interior space. Quite a few hallways going going everywhere here. That's pretty cool. Like the uh, the configuration here. So it looks like as soon as you walk in, you've got uh, looks like six passenger seats, and each one of them have have their own box too, which is uh, kind of nice. Again, kind of uh, I would say that this would be something maybe for uh, like a faction on a multiplayer server, um, maybe to get everybody to a mission destination point, bring some vehicles, things like that, and uh, kind of load up and. Uh, and do whatever your your mission plan was looks like we also got a constructor here and it looks like another constructor on the other side of this um, and we got a uh, shield and uh, this kind of open uh, window off the front almost looks like a cockpit should go here but uh, when I when I parked this I discovered this I at first I looked for the uh, the cockpit right there thinking ah, why isn't there a cockpit there um, and it's over here. There's like a separate room off to the side with its own glass canopy that does ha actually have the cockpit in it, which is uh, pretty interesting there. Didn't expect that one. Um, it's cool, though. And in here, you got another box and a fridge as well. So the uh, the pilot gets uh, some munchies. I wonder, do they, these guys have any uh, nearby uh, fridges in their general vicinity here? No, these guys starve to death. The pilot is... Uh, is uh, he, uh, the pilot's the one that, that uh, eats there. Um, but, you know, the pilot's got to pay attention more. These guys can just, uh, I don't know, probably play video games on their iPhone or something. Uh, <laughs> I'm just kidding. Uh, anyway, so uh, we've got some storage over here as well. Looks like we got a ammo controller on this side at 5750. I'm curious if we've got that going on here, too. Yep, another ammo controller. So... Yeah, we're uh, a little over like 11 5k of ammo, um, and then we've got another storage controller here at 17 250, and it looks like another one over here at 23 500. So, yeah, so a good uh, like 40k uh, storage, and then 11.5k uh, ammo storage. We also got our warp drive right here in the center section, kind of enclosed. On the glass there and then away up to the uh, the flight deck in this se section now over here uh, there's a couple switches um, I think I got them both in the on position um, and the reason why some of this is is uh, I had my video interrupted I started doing this and I started looking at the ship already and then I uh, 
had a phone call and had to break up the video. So I started again, and that's why I kind of had these flips, uh, these switches flipped and things like that. Behind uh, switch number one is uh, basically four advanced CPU cores. And then uh, uh, the second switch here opens up the compartments to add up to uh, another four um, one by two CPU blocks. So um, right now I believe it's configured for vanilla, but in the description it also said it can be configured for Reforged Eden and Star Salvage. So it's, it's pretty universal with uh, what can be done with the, uh, the ship here. And that's cool that you got uh, spots to add in, you know, CPU cores, you know, to, depending on what uh, scenario you're using this in, it, uh, you can make it uh, work with all of them, which is a really cool idea there. So I think that's it on the interior of the ship here. Um, pretty straightforward. I mean, it's not super big. I mean, it's, it is a SV, though. For SV, it is quite large. But, uh, yeah, cool layout here. I also like the uh, the side entry doors, too. That's uh, pretty neat. And you can pat walk right through the, uh, the inside of the ship that way. And, of course, you can uh, uh, easily climb up through here and get out to the uh, uh, flight deck and pick up whatever crafts might be landed on the uh, top of it. So let's take a look at some specs here. Let me get the light back on here a minute. So, uh, unlock level 20, size class 4, 50 uh, MS forward, 11 strafing, 100 lift, a lot of lift on here, 25 uh, reverse, 23 down. I would also imagine the uh, lift is to accommodate for, well, the, uh, it's still, it's running above 50k am or 50k storage total, um, and you can also park other uh, HVs or SVs on top of it, so it has to accommodate for the weight of those as well. And I'm sure that's why this particular stat is uh, up there a ways. Not to mention, you know, maybe uh, it sounds like in uh, certain scenarios, especially in Star Salvage and things like that, that um, you would need a lot of lift thrust, maybe going down to higher gravity planets and things like that. So definitely very useful. Uh, five hour and 37 minute build time does require a little bit of estrium and zacosium, uh, not much so probably uh, to do with the thrusters or the uh, the four laser turrets that are on here. Also has a detector, six fuel tanks, six oxygen tanks. Uh, the only thing that I, I that I see here that I'm not sure if it was an oversight or maybe just in the scenario that I spawned this in, it's not showing up, is uh, it doesn't seem to have a ventilator in there. So the I didn't see one actually walking through the ship either, so uh, that could be just uh, an oversight. I don't know. There's uh, there's oxygen tanks and stuff like that, but um, uh, might not have any O2 in it stock um, unless you just quickly add a ventilator somewhere, um, or or it's just when I spawned it, it didn't it, for whatever reason that didn't show up. I I couldn't say. So let's take a look at your oops. Darn it, I always hit that button instead. Um, let's take a look at... Uh, yeah, we already kind of looked at all that there. We've got a, a lot of different boxes along the way here, too. So quite a bit of storage boxes. It looks like each uh, passenger seat plus pilot has their own box to put things in as well, which is uh, pretty cool. Again, something that I think would be uh, kind of useful for, like, a faction if you're playing, you know, multiplayer with a bunch of people and uh, you decide to all like uh, uh, use this ship to get to the uh, destination perform whatever mission including uh, additional vehicles with you so very very cool design there um one last thing you know what i didn't look at is the cpu so uh obviously it had four advanced cpu cores in its stock uh, to get it to 60k cpu i know you could add in two improved and one basic you probably don't even need that to hit the cpu that's in here and it does have locations to add those plus some so it shouldn't really be a problem just just keep keep in mind that at least in reforged eden uh scenario that you do need uh, a little bit more cpu uh before you start flying it around or you could probably damage the generators and whatnot in here one other thing i noticed too is this actually has quite a bit of rcs in it um i looked at the numbers here um, where it said it had 32 RCS, and my first thought was that's just the uh, the thrusters that were used. 
Um, and then I, I, I kind of flew around a little bit and realized, no, it actually does have 32 RCS in here. It has two banks like this. So each one has uh, 16 RCS in here. There's one there and there's one over here. So I got to assume that that is to increase its maneuverability um, flying around. Um, maybe that's uh, something that's uh, a little more important in Star Salvage. I don't know exactly. Um, but interesting, interesting. Um, I'm kind of wondering if... Uh, there's a better use for RCS. I, I wouldn't doubt if some stats changed. Uh, RCS back in the day used to be required pretty much for any moving creation to turn or move. Um, and then the flight model, the newer flight model, which took place probably about three years ago now, changed all that. And then at that point on, I don't, I don't think I've ever used an RCS in a creation. So I sort of forgot about the part entirely. Um, but uh, may, maybe there's a good reason for for the uh, the 32 RCS in here. But uh, anyway, very cool looking design. I, li I definitely like it. The uh, like SV dropship uh, multiplayer dropship with uh, a bunch of features for an SV, including some some uh, crafting and uh, you know definitely passenger seats and uh, upgrade ability and things like that. So again, the uh, Remora by Raccoona. Very cool. Very cool. So the next creation here, and I'm kind of glad I had a delay in this video. Um, when I first uh, did the video, I had the Intrepid S picked out, um, and I realized that I never uh, acquired the Steam link. So I went back there before doing this video to uh, get all the links to the creations, and then I realized, and then I seen that the Intrepid S uh, had a big uh, graphics on it saying outdated, and to instead grab the S2. So that's what I did here. So I've got the... Uh, I got the new improved model. I don't know, you know, what the differences are from the S1 version, um, but it, the S1 version clearly says right in the uh, blueprint picture that it's outdated and you should use this one. So that's what I did. So this is the uh, FP Intrepid S2 by 10M Fledwig. And this, I believe, is a starter CV. Really cool looking one too. I gotta say, I love this uh, glass canopy on the front of it. It, uh, yeah, it's oh, it actually looks like it has kind of a like a second level in there too. That is that is that is really cool. Nice looking ship design. It really is. It's uh, I don't know. It, again, kind of reminds me of uh, or maybe it is Intrepid. Is there an Intrepid in Star Citizen? I don't recall. I really don't. I really should uh, catch up on some Star Citizen ships again. But uh, I don't know if this has any affiliation to Star Citizen. I asked because of the uh, the cockpit. Looks like it uh, something I would see in uh, maybe a Star Citizen ship. But uh, at least inspired from it, maybe. I don't know. It's a very cool cockpit. I, I definitely like it. And uh, yeah, this ship also has some uh, solar panels here on it too. As I noticed a couple on the top here. And then a couple more on the bottom side that are kind of like mixed right into the hull there. Which is a pretty cool idea. I like the formation of the thrusters around the solar panels there. The color breakups are really nice on here too. Um, even with the glass uh, where the, the, the side glass is painted uh, white. And then you got kind of some grays and then there's some uh, also some blacks in there. And of course you got to have that, uh, that red line there, that accent line. But... I mean, all that stuff adds a lot of uh, a lot of uh, looks to uh, creation too. It's uh, definitely uh, doesn't have to have it, but it it is nice. It is nice to see uh, the mix-ups and the, uh, the 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 color changes like that. Definitely like that. Looks like we got some sneaky little guns here too. Like this looks like it's going to be uh, a sentry gun here, and uh, yeah, probably one over there as well. A couple of other things, too, that I'm noticing, too, and it's kind of a dead giveaway on how the uh, the thrusters are set up in the thruster pods, is I believe, I'm going to test this, that this is uh, all set up for upgrading. Um, so you've got a couple of these smaller thrusters in here right now, but I bet you, if we fly in here, yep, look at that, we've got room for a big thruster. So, yeah, you could put in a couple of small, uh, more smaller thrusters here, or you could uh, take out the whole bunch of them and put in just a big large thruster that would fit in the area there too so you can definitely upgrade your performance 
uh, reverse and probably forward I bet uh, same same thing going on over here so you can uh, you got a lot of fluctuation there and you can really uh, uh, soup this up with uh, thruster performance at least going forward and reverse uh, maybe other directions I don't know yet uh, very cool anyway let me uh, let me adjust the lights here and we'll go uh, tour this ship here a minute Oh, yeah, I like the, uh, everything's on the sensor over here. Blinky lights coming into the hangar. Very nice. So, yeah, a bunch of stuff as soon as you get in the hangar. Oh, we got an info LCD, too. Very cool. Uh, so we got some generators on the ceiling. We got our warp drive there. Uh, advanced constructor off the side over here. Armor locker. Is this a, is this a switch? Hey, that is a switch. Oh, yeah. We got, looks like we got ammo there, and that is a Pentaxa tank. Oh, and that's cool. It's, got, it's rigged up through uh, this this piece. I almost forget about it. I used this once, and then I forgot about it again. But that is a, like, legit, like, on-off switch, which is really cool. Um, oh, yeah. I got one on this side here, too. Oh, it looks like places for uh, upgrade parts. That three blocks high, two blocks tall. Okay, and then yeah, of course that that part over there would be uh, again for putting in the uh, larger reverse thrusters. Yeah, that's cool. Neat idea with the uh, the switch here. I like that. And uh, nice looking LCD too, like old school LCD with the uh, the trim border on it, which actually looks quite nice, really. Um, so I'm sure this talks about the upgrades of the thrusters and sounds like some other things here too. And yeah, place another turret there. Yeah, so adding some more turrets, uh, thrusters. You can remove this LCD after reading. What if no one wants to because it looks so nice? <laughs> uh, I'm just kidding. It is a nice looking LCD though. Um, so also we've got uh, oxygen in here, like the LCD up over here, the S2 version. really cool oh uh, not to mention two cargo storage areas here too so two 320s and back be uh, compatible with vanilla as well so then we come into a crew area here this is cool I like the uh, the going to like the hardwood floor over here interesting interesting so we've got a uh, looks like an um, elevator there some beds table uh, food processor and fridge like our toilet and shower right in that section there and an upgrade uh, spot over here just trying to think on what this is for R in 1 by 2 I probably have to look at the sign what starts with R that would be two blocks I don't know exactly maybe uh, RCS I don't know. Oh, some more upgrade uh, parts over here. CC. Oh, probably computer core. Yep, that would make sense. So additional uh, uh, computer core blocks, maybe a couple improved cores or advanced cores, and then uh, more of that uh, similar stuff on this side here where you can get an improved. Um, yeah, another... Uh, some more CPU cores, basically. I like this uh, this bridge setup here, too. Again, that glass canopy, um, it looks really cool from the outside. It looks really cool from the inside, as well. And I do like the color changes on the glass, too. A couple passenger seats over here. And then it looks like uh, we got a pilot seat down here. And it looks like we got another pilot seat up top there. So let's, uh, let's head up another floor here. Oh, we got a back door here, too. Oh, look at this. Got a uh, medical bay over here. Oh, that's cool. And then off the back here, we've got uh, a little engineering area. Looks like we got a uh, Wi-Fi in our main core and a ventilator in this section. O2, and yeah, everything you'd want with your medical bay. And then of course you got your shower and toilet on the uh, the lower floor right below here. So really, uh, really quick. And then here, it looks like we hop right into that upper uh, level uh, cockpit area. 
It'd be quite a nice view flying the ship from here. You can see pretty much everywhere around you. That's cool. Neat looking design here. So definitely, uh, definitely this is, uh, uh, I gotta say this would be a starter CV. Um, let's uh, just a light to take a look at some numbers here. So yeah, unlock level 12, size class 1.33. 31 forward, 16 strafing, 63 lift, 31 down, 31 reverse. Uh, four hour and 53 minute build time. And no estrium or zec cosium or anything uh, anything weird at all. So yeah, definitely say this is a uh, starter ship. And uh, quite inexpensive for a CV. Uh, so we've got seven retractable sentry guns. There are quite a lot of those. A detector and a retractable or two retract retractable minigun turrets. Four oxygen tanks, four fuel tanks. CPU wise. Ooh, look at that. So all we got in here is a basic CPU core to bring it to four hundred thousand CPU, at least in Reforge Eden. Um well, room for a lot more CPU and other upgrades such as thrusters and generators. I believe that's probably for, for one of those slots over there. Um so even even this, you've got you know over 50,000 uh, CPU left over before you even need to add anything. So you could add some more stuff to the ship right off the gates without really having a problem here. Um, and then you can certainly upgrade the uh, the CPU on it. But it keeps it nice and cheap when you uh, go to spawn it and uh, uh, put it in your factory and game. That's is really cool. So storage wise. So we've got an ammo box at 14k. Uh, looks like we've got two controllers. Uh, well, we've seen those in the hangar at 320k a piece. Beyond that, a couple uh, cargo boxes and your regular stuff, uh, you know, fridge stuff like that. So yeah, definitely, uh, definitely uh, hits the uh, bill here for the starter CV. Got quite a lot of storage in it for a starter as well, and it's a really cool looking ship. I mean, it really is. Obviously, you got one of your retractable turrets over here. Um, looks like I've got a lot of sentry guns, so if you park this on the ground here, uh, you've got these guns that'll help protect the, uh, the ship from, I don't know, predators or, you know, uh, Xerox copiers or <laughs> whatever. Sorry, I, I, I meant Xerox, but I like to call them Xerox. I don't know why. I just do. Um, yeah, really cool ship. Didn't even notice this, too, but it looks like we got a, uh, quick way in at the top of the elevator there for, uh, which is really convenient when you're flying around in space or whatnot and you want to get back in your ship quickly and get get moving um that is a nice way to do that there a yeah, really cool looking ship again so again fp intrepid s2 by 10m fledwig very cool design so the next one here uh we got a, a little guy here this is a uh oh you don't have fuel do you yeah you do never mind okay so this one here is the SHY-101A by the Wizard Lizard. Um, this is a uh, a little uh, a little like kind of like a starter SV, but a really cool looking one. I I'm really like the design going on here. Um, it, it reminds me of like a helicopter gunship, sort of, but not really. Um, I mean, like the uh, the fuselage area here definitely reminds me of like a uh, helicopter gunship, and so does even like the tail section. But then it has these wings that I gotta uh, uh, think more of like a like a uh, like a VTOL craft that these might be uh, jets or fans that would uh, lift the uh, the craft up so it can do uh, vertical takeoff and landing like a helicopter. It's just not a helicopter. It's a little more modern <laughs> i have a feeling that you're, you'll probably see uh a lot of like future uh flying crafts like that um kind of go the way of the drone um where you'd have that kind of thing going on or VTOL thrusters like a uh an offspray um yeah really cool looking sh uh, sv here though like the uh the block work a lot here and nice nice looking side profile love the uh the tail with the uh the, how this is set up here too that, that that looks really cool yeah it's pretty much right to the point and then, uh yeah check out this really cool looking area so you've got uh passenger seats over in in here too 
Got a fridge, armor locker, oxygen down over there, access to the, uh, the cockpit from inside of here. Yeah, that's cool. And a ventilator up in there, too. And a spotlight, a couple Gatling guns right over to the side over here. Yeah, it's just, it's a cool looking design. Very cool looking design. I mean, it's not very big. You don't have that many blocks to work with, but uh, the author did a great job. And also, I like, uh, you know, um, shaping the uh, the hull blocks around the prefab cockpit here, too. That, that That's a nice touch, too. So all your angles match and everything. That's a, a really cool thing to do. Keeps it nice and uh, aerodynamic looking. But, yeah, cool looking creation here. Uh, let's take a look at w what makes it tick. So, unlock level 10, size class 0 0.42, 55 forward, 8 strafing, 83 lift. Got a lot of lift thrust here, again. Uh, 15 uh, reverse, 15 down. Um, one fuel tank, one oxygen tank. Uh, oh, yeah, look at this. This is impressive over here. So, no rare resources whatsoever. Like, you know, you start the game with your, uh, your multi-tool and you chop down a couple trees and get a little bit of iron and copper and silicon from rocks laying around and you can have this thing up and going in 32 minutes and four seconds um that's that's really cool so really really uh, inexpensive uh creation uh to build and use in uh in game um so it'll provide transportation obviously you got a couple guns you can shoot up some stuff some occasional drone or wildlife or xerox copiers <laughs> or, what, or whatever you're going to shoot at and uh do it pretty inexpensively uh, let's take a look at your storage here so we got a looks like we got an ammo controller in there uh not a lot of ammo but you know what it's got two gatling guns you know um or two two minigun um fixed weapons um you can uh you can put a lot of ammo in for those two weapons in this this amount of volume. It does not take much at all. So it's not a lot of uh, ammo storage, but plenty for for the uh, weapon loadout that's on the uh, on the uh, ship here. Or well, should I say uh, aircraft? <laughs> it, it certainly looks like an aircraft. It's just it, it is really cool look. A really cool look. Nice nice work on the uh, the body shaping and this part here. This uh, coming up with that uh, like step step piece that just looks that looks great that looks great in the mix there definitely like that so again this is the uh shy 101 a by the wizard lizard really cool uh starter sv design if you want to fly around in style early game um yeah that's a really good pick for that so the next one here this is a more of a combat oriented uh cv i can uh would bet by the uh, the looks of it and this is the uh you know, let me get my uh yeah epsilon zeta uh for reforged eden and this is by oz fresh um so this looks like a pretty meaty ship here just taking a look at some of its uh, general decor here kind of looks like we might have uh i don't know maybe some upgrade positions for some additional like launchers in those areas on the sides uh, quite a lot of turrets on here stock. Oh yeah, quite a lot. And we've got uh, these guys here. These these look like mining drills. These mining drills? No, that's positron. Never mind. Uh, <laughs> yeah, sometimes I. Uh, well, hold on here. Oh, they are on this side. Yeah. Okay. So we got two drills and two positrons. Interesting. I didn't realize that. And uh, quite a barrage of turrets across the top here. And it looks like there would be uh, opportunities to add more turrets around here, especially out on the, with the, the wingtips here and other uh, various places. Uh, this location here. And we got a bridge way kind of in the in the back area, kind of keeping it away from the where the most of the action would take place, which would be around the front of the ship. Uh, looks like more of a front combat oriented uh, ship. And uh, potential, it uh, looks like uh, the way the, the thruster housings are set in here, it looks like uh, the author was probably trying to conserve on some CPU, but it kind of looks like this is marked 
uh, in such a way to put an XL, a XL thruster in this location instead of what's there. And yeah, definitely, it's it's got an open space on the back side of it for that as well. So that's cool. So you can definitely upgrade your uh, reverse thrusters, uh, potentially other thrusters on the ship. And that's probably what this is here too. It looks like this is probably another designated spot here to add in another uh, thruster like this over in this location, potentially in that location as well. And we do actually have XL thrusters uh, uh, stock forward on here. Like the uh, the block work over here with the uh, the texture lights in the mix there. That's that's really cool. We got this uh, open glass here kind of peering down to the hangar below here. Looks like we got an info LCD as well. And then the bridge above that, pretty visible from, from outside here. Glass roof on top of that. Yeah, it's cool. So here, let me adjust the lights here a second. I just, uh, I also just noticed something with that hangar door. Let me back off a second. Oh yeah, look at that. There's like an LCD that goes over the uh, the blast door uh, hangar set up there. Add a little uh, decor to that. Oh, that's interesting. Oh, then it it disappears too. It doesn't stay there. But it, it like uh, it's like it's time to do it. Maybe after uh, particular like a second or two. Oh, that's cool. That is really cool. Oh, did you? Whoa. There's another LCD that goes over this, the inside of it. Hey, look at that. Oh, that's interesting. I didn't expect that. So it's actually two LCDs around here. Yeah, that just that one just disappeared. Then there's also a force field in here. No, oh, that's that's pretty cool. So we got a uh, hangar uh, area here. It looks like a spot for a repair bay potentially right there. Um, got a glass floor on this as well. Uh, long range uh, radar up there. Uh, looks like we got a couple uh, large generators. Uh, one on this side and one on this side. Uh, what do we got? Go. Okay, we got an elevator going up there. And we got a shower right off the side of the hangar here. Uh, armor locker. A couple places to uh, sit and chill. Oh, cool looking uh, info LCD here. Oh, just kind of looking at the uh, the. the the back of that that is uh that's really different looking that's cool kind of looks like it's fading in sort of kind of a slick idea there so uh yeah by any crew yeah very cool i like seeing the uh welcome signs in these ships uh orientate players a little bit with it and it looks like we got our cpu core blocks right on the side here and then a nice display of the uh, warp drive here in the middle Again, you can kind of look up the ship and actually see the uh, the cockpit bridge area up there. And we got a uh, storage control over here. It looks like a 320. Probably another one on this side. Yeah, standard storage. Yep. Oh yeah, we got some panels over here and a switch. Oh yeah, so a bunch of uh, fuel tanks, I think, or oxygen. Fuel, fuel over here. Does this do anything? Nope. Okay. I'm just kind of curious if uh, I believe you can use that as a switch as well. But this, this is uh, that makes a lot of sense having the switch there. And it looks like we've got another compartment on this side here with some more fuel tanks. Very cool. Like how they're kind of tucked away off to the side there. And then we get into this section. It's quite brightly lit in here, too, because I am actually at nighttime. So you can definitely see inside here quite well at night. Um, just taking a look at what we got going on here. Oh. Those are grow plots with an LCD over the top of them. Yeah, they are, too. Yeah, look at that. That's cool. Never, I don't think I've seen that done before. Kind of a nice touch, so um, kind of an LCD that was made to form fit over the uh, the, the grow plots. Oh, that's cool. We got a medium uh, reforged Eden shield right in this section here, 
And then we've got uh, our Pentaxa tank, and it looks like main CPU core kind of behind the uh, the glass area here, and some production. We've got a couple of advanced constructors over there, another one here, and it looks like a deconstructor. Uh, some cargo boxes up over there. Yeah, cool looking uh, grow light uh, tube that kind of comes down here. Oh, and that's not it though. Oh, it looks like we've got uh, another uh, grow grow position over here, probably for the Reforged Eden type of uh, uh, more enhanced uh, grow plots that are like a three by three area on both sides there. And we got, of course, uh, oh yeah, you got the uh, the fridges, food processors here for all that stuff. We've got our, our main shield here and Wi-Fi. And I got to say, it looks like a cryogen and, uh, or a, a basically a big uh, electronics like cooling tank. Um, seen this in some sci-fi shows before. It's like some ultra cool liquid where you kind of like let this float around in there and it keeps the, uh, allows you to uh, run the CPU hotter, essentially. Uh, that's cool. I, I like the uh, like the uh, the effect that that gives off. And it actually looks like it's liquid down there too. That's cool. That's cool. We got a teleporter right over here, and oh, that's glass right there. So we're actually oh yeah, it's a, hard to see, but yeah, it's actually uh, 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 some glass running across the top here, and then a big glass wall on the front. Now I gotta assume. Uh, by the nature of this ship, that this is a lot of stuff for the AI to shoot at. <laughs> uh, yeah, big old, um, big front area here to take a lot of hits and keep on going um, in this section here. Just curious, is this, you know? Oh, there's a small thruster in here, too. Oh, so that's actually a thruster, so like a decoy part. Oh, no, it's combat steel. Interesting. There is something to be said uh, about combat steel versus Xeno. Now, Xeno is a little bit lighter, um, quite a bit lighter, actually, and slightly more hit points than combat steel. But, but combat steel, you can, um, you know, you can go mine some various asteroids and, you know, basically get all your resources for the combat steel if you got to, re you know, repair your ship or anything. But Xeno... You would have to basically salvage a, a POI or something to get Xeno. So it's a, it is harder um, and can be more, a lot more time consuming to acquire in game. Um, although it does have advantages on uh, on its weight versus strength ratio to combat steel, but it, it is a lot harder to uh, get in game. If you were in uh, frequent battles where you took damage, especially on the front area here, and had to keep on repairing it, that could be quite cumbersome if it was Xeno, I think. I've done that with some of my ships too, where I had Xeno in there, and it's like, yeah, it is a lot harder to obtain that. All right, so I'm going to get out of this area. I'm going to hit this uh, elevator here. I imagine this would get us up to the bridge section. Oh, yeah, look at that. That's interesting. Tunneling here. Oh, wow, that's a super bright area here. What is that? Is that? Oh, that's an LCD right there. Oh yeah, that's that's pretty cool. It's kind of like a, a barrier coming up into this uh, this bridge area. It's a pretty interesting looking bridge area. A lot of uh, big glass coming around here. Looks like you'd have a nice uh, visibility. Uh, looking forward, and then you can see all your uh, front guns on the top firing at the same time. And then uh, oh yeah, back over here. Oh, look at this. We got, like, the uh, the captain's room over here. Or the, uh, the, yeah, that's cool. Yeah, kind of a hardwood floor here. Got a seat, a nice bed, desk, a little computer desk, uh, armor locker, and a television and a cool-looking shag rug. <laughs> that's cool. That's cool. You know, honestly, I, I hardly ever see this texture get used. So I'm kind of surprised. I never see this. Oh, and this is Xeno over here. Okay. I was going to say, you can't do that with combat steel or any other uh, material. So that is actual Xeno used to make like a this shag-looking rug, which is, actually looks pretty cool. I like that. Ah, very cool. Oh, let's take you here. Let me get the lights back on. We'll take a look at some specs here. 
So unlock level 25, size class 5, 54 forward, 15 strafing, 54 lift, 15 reverse, 15 down. Um, obviously, there's, uh, you can kind of tell by the markings and how this is designed on the ship here that we you can uh, up some thrust power here on the ship as well. Um, definitely in, in quite a few different areas. Let me just fly around inside of here a little bit. See if we got open space for that kind of thing. Oh, we got some crazy lights going on here. Oh, yeah, there's some definitely uh, blinkies going on. Notice that super uh, huge amount before. Speaking of, let me, uh, I was finished the stats. I want to just take a look at the P menu and the shield as well. Uh, so 18 hour and 28 minute build time. It is going to require some uh, Astrium and Zacosium. And some other things. You can expect that with any kind of uh, combat CB, though. I, it's, you really can't make one with, that doesn't use that. I don't think that's impossible. Um, eight fuel tanks, uh, eight oxygen tanks, six ventilators. Uh, CPU-wise, we're at Core 9, Reforged Eden. Um, it's got some extra space beyond that, too. Uh, just about 140,000 left over CPU. Uh it's weird. I just looked at a Xeno block up there, and it says total Xeno blocks. Oh, never mind. Wait. Oh, zero. I'm not sure what the zero over here means, um, but uh, I guess it does have a lot of Xeno on it. So maybe I'm, I uh, miscalculated a lot of those blocks in the front, where I thought they're combat steel and there's Xeno. But if I'm getting the gist here, that this has got 2,011 Xeno blocks on it. So interesting. Hard, hardened steel blocks at 265. Combat steel at 255. Oh, I'm way off. I must have looked at the one combat steel block on here that. Yeah, there, this is all Xeno. Oh, I now understand. Well, wait a minute. We got Xeno, Xeno, combat. Hmm. So it's actually like two different materials here, but mostly Xeno. I did not realize that. I uh, that I looked at the combat and I just assumed it was all combat steel. Um, like over here, it looks like it is. But oh yeah, then it is you know in here too. Okay, okay. That makes sense. That makes sense. So let's take a look at your storage as well. Uh, so we've got uh, how nicely labeled over here. So it looks like we've got uh, let's see input miscellaneous. We've got uh, just about 320k there for that. We've got 324 uh, raw ammunition controller at 320k there. Okay, so and then it looks like the rest of these. It's hard to it's hard to say if they're controllers uh blocks and devices that's a controller there gardening okay that's not loot probably not armor and boost probably not yeah okay so we've got uh, a few controllers here um so looks like at least 640k regular storage plus um 320k ammo storage i was just curious if it had a uh Harvest uh, controller in it because it did have the uh, the two um, these two guys over here drill modules. So I didn't. Uh, did, uh, maybe that's here. Is this a uh, raw or scrap pile? I gotta assume this would be a harvest, right? Isn't it supposed to say that somewhere, though? It would make sense, though. It would make sense. It would back those uh, the mining drills there, too. So anyway, again, this is the uh, Epsilon Zeta RE. Um, and this is by Ozfress. Uh, looks like a pretty aggressive uh, combat ship there. Very cool. Very cool. And sorry about uh, mixing up the hull material there. It's just a little tricky there. There's combat steel and Xeno in there. And I... Uh, I didn't see the Xeno quick enough, even though it's mostly, mostly Xeno. So, very cool. Next creation here, this is the, uh, the, the Xyphos 
dash C3 by uh, Frenetic. Fre um, this is a uh, this is a little SV here. Well, not that little, but it's a cool look and uh, very aerodynamic uh, SV. I definitely like the uh, the, the slender uh, looks of it and uh, just uh, it's really uh, really thin. Got a pretty cool looking uh, cockpit area here too, where it's uh, kind of inverted glass where you're sitting on on the bottom here. It's going to give you some really nice visibility, especially flying over uh, uh, planet areas and things like that. You can see down and what's going on probably easier in first person that way. We've got some landing gear over here. Looks like we've got uh, yeah some uh, some lift thrust there. I like the general shape of this. I like this uh, wing in the back here too. Um, yeah, as in the uh, the thrusters and the blocks, I don't think that doesn't matter on as anything I can tell. But there's a couple of th thrusters here that you know technically would be I guess blocked by blocks, but uh, the game uh, doesn't care. <laughs> so it's it's not really a thing at all. Um, yeah, that's cool. Oh, I got a sentry gun down below the wing here too. Just looking around for some other weapons or retractables or something like that. Looks like we've got a couple, uh, couple, uh, something going on over here. I have to uh, try to bring those out here in a bit. Just kind of curious if it had, uh, it's got to have an interior because it has an interior uh, cockpit area. So I'm probably missing something here. Oh, how do you get in you? On the top? Is that what this is? Doesn't want to respond to me hitting a button on it. Or is it down in this general area? Under here? Ah, here it is. I didn't even know you could use these doors with SVs. I guess you can. Oh, that's cool. Maybe maybe that's a, is that a reforge Eden only thing? But yeah, we do have a boarding ramp. Wait a minute. Is this? Am I just completely mistaken? And this is a CV. I think I'm completely mistaken. This is a CV, isn't it? Yes, it is. My goodness. I kept on calling it SV because it's. Yeah, I guess SVs are small. I'm sorry about that. Wow, it kind of looks like an SV. It would certainly make a good SV too. But no, this is actually a CV. So I was mistaken on everything. Holy smokes! Sorry about that. It just looked. Um, it, it just looks like an SV. <laughs> That's cool that it's a CV though. I definitely like that. So yeah, that explains why you can use a boarding ramp here. It looks like as you walk in, you have a location to add in a warp drive. I would say. Uh, looks like the perfect uh, measurements here for that. And then you got a detector in back. Might have to remove those two uh, LCDs or projector LCDs when you place a warp drive, but uh, oh yeah, we've got some here. I'll uh, try to follow the course here. Let me adjust the lighting here too. Wow, I thought this was an SV. That's 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 pretty good though. I actually consider that to be a compliment because usually SVs are shape-wise more detailed uh, than a CV because the blocks are a lot smaller and you can do more with that uh, for size, but the way this is uh, configured, it looks it looks pretty slick yeah, on the outside. It's got uh, some really nice shaping going on, and therefore I just kind of looked at it, especially next to a much larger CV next to it. I just kind of assumed this was an SV. I don't know why I did that, but uh, it's not, and that's cool. Um, so we got an armor locker. Looks like we got a fridge, O2, and a clone chamber over here. Um, down this area here, it looks like we got a food processor and a uh, small constructor. And this was our boarding ramp here in the window to the warp drive. This is a cool way to do it. Obviously, this was a, this is a pretty small ship, so I can't you can't have too much space in here. And then you're right up to the uh, the uh, cockpit here. Yeah, duh. Yeah, this is clearly a CV. 
I uh, apologize for that. I gotta make a. I gotta make at least one error per video. Uh, the more the merrier, though. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Um, but that that is that is cool. That is cool. Very shapely uh, creation here. Um, nice looking design there. So yeah, pretty much straight to the point. Got a boarding ramp and uh, yeah, fly around here. Let's uh, see what's uh, going on with the CPU. So this doesn't hardly use any CPU, uh, really. Uh, 71,000. Um, I started with the CPU, but let's take a look at the rest of this. Unlock level 7. Wow, that is a really low unlock level for ACV with an hour and 20 minute build time, too. So, I mean, this is cheaper than most most SVs I've seen as well. So um, that 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 is another uh, a very cool thing. It's uh, for a CV. This is really cheap for a CV, um, you know, price wise, and it's not using any rares in here either. So I mean, just what CVs got to use for their thrusters and and stuff, um, which is like some neo and some cobalt and a little titanium, but nothing, nothing, nothing at all, even remotely close to special on on the materials needed for this ship. Uh, so we got 50, uh, 59 forward, 15 strafing, 29 uh, lift, 29 reverse, 29 down, three fuel tanks, three oxygen tanks. Uh, doesn't have uh, any like big big time turrets on here or anything like that. It does have, uh, looks like four sensory guns and a detector. Um, and obviously we already seen the, uh, the CPU, which is really, really, really low CPU usage on this. Um, no CPU core blocks at all on here, plus quite a lot of CPU left over, like 130,000 more than it's using um, is left over, even without upgrading that. We got some uh, P menu options over here, defenses, upgrades, eco mode, and boarding ramp. Ah, the boarding ramp. That's probably why it wasn't up. Let me uh, reset that there, okay. Eco mode, so I imagine that would adjust thrusters to fly uh, cheaper. Upgrades. What is this? I wonder if that's what those two LCDs uh, that I seen and um, coming into the ship by the warp drive. I bet you they. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Warp drive goes right there. Okay, and that's meant to remove. And the pentaxid tank. Oh, so you take out these blocks right here and you put the pentaxid tank right there. And that's what the LCDs are there to indicate. And both are supposed to be removed. So, yeah, that, that, that makes total sense. Now, um, I've seen them there, and I'm like, oh, you'd have to remove that before you fit in a warp drive. But that was the intent. That is absolutely the intent of it. So that is really cool. Now, very cool. So, uh, again, this is the... Uh, Zyphos uh, C3 by uh, Fenner. I have a really hard time with, with, with uh, um, your name there. Sorry about this, but F R E N E T I C. Fren Frenic Ick. <laughs> Fren Frenic. I'm saying it wrong. I, I apologize. Um, someone correct me, please. <laughs> Sorry about that. But really, really cool, uh, shapely ship. And honestly. Yeah, first glimpse, man. I uh, really thought it was an SV. I really, really did. It's, uh, I guess, uh, proportionally looking at it now, it's. I, I realize it's a CV, but um, yeah, it looks like it could make a for a pretty, pretty cool SV as well. Uh, maybe I don't know. Honestly, with the the problem with the SV though is you got to have a minimum of three blocks tall to be able to walk through the space. And this one uh, with CVs, you only have to have one block tall or technically even a half block tall to walk through. So maybe it won't translate to a C or to a SV um, because I don't know if it's got enough blocks in here to be able to uh, walk through. Maybe, maybe it does. Uh, anyway, very cool. So the last creation here, this is a really weird one uh, I found somewhere, and I thought it looked pretty interesting. Uh, so I wanted to check it out. This is the uh, Buffy the Vampire Slayer house and this is by Akinar. um and i just uh i thought it kind of had this uh i actually back in the day i did did actually watch buffy the vampire slayer series so i'm a little familiar 
Um, been a long time, but it, it was a fun show. Um, but this looks um, almost like it's for a different game um, on how this is uh, done up. And some of the things I was just kind of looking at was, you know, especially from a little bit of distance. I know it's big voxel blocks and you can't do everything. And, it, you know, a game like Seven Days to Die would have a lot better options for you to build this kind of thing where Imperium you know, is obviously mostly focused around spaceships and stuff like that. But I looked at this and I thought it looked really good considering that Imperium really doesn't give you a lot of options for this kind of thing. And I love the, uh, the complexity of the, uh, the house here and like the chimney and the bricks and the texture used for the siding um, and the windows and things like that. And it's a little deceptive too. It's got a basement now. It's going to have a, I'm going to have to walk to the ground slightly uh, to show you the basement. I wanted to kind of spawn it so it was uh, fairly flush with the ground. I guess I'm a little off on that too, but um, yeah, it's, it's just cool looking. It's just, it just looks different. It looks like it's, it looks like it's, it looks like it's something in Seven Days to Die or some kind of city builder, uh, <laughs> in my opinion. It, it's, uh, but yeah, it's uh, modeled after the, uh, uh, Buffy, Buffy's house, in in the uh, in the shower series um, on that. So that that is uh, that is really cool. And this uh, I like the I like the use of the siding here too. This uh, this is obviously a wood texture. I've used this texture before when you can. You can only use it on bases, of course. But uh, yeah, just the way it's painted and everything, it just it looks really cool. Uh, the bricks, everything, pretty authentic there. So uh, here, I'm going to uh, just take a walk around here a minute. See what's going on on the inside. Let me uh, lower the lighting down. So, yeah, so we got a stairway going up to the uh, the second floor there. Got a, uh, a kind of a table, uh, I don't know, kitchen table or something like that here. I like the uh, cabinet over there. And, of course, you got your porch. Got to have the porch. Uh, cool looking wall lighting there. Got our kitchen, food processor, island, uh, refrigerator, and uh, all your uh, stuff over here. Oh, that's actually, uh, it's actually glass on the outside so you can see right through there. That's pretty cool. Way out, uh, oh, back room here. Oh, and this kind of walks in between there. Oh, that's, that's different. I, you know, it's been so long since I've seen that show. I, I certainly didn't memorize uh, what the uh, what the house looked like. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, no, this is cool. This is cool. So up here looks like we got a large bedroom. Master bedroom. TV on the wall. Computer desk. Bed. Uh, carpet. Another dresser. And it's kind of neat with bases. You get some different options that you just do not get with uh, anything else in the game. You can do some different things here. Oh, and this is just a lighting switch here. And, uh, yeah, this is back out over here. And so these are more uh, bedrooms. we got to have a bedroom over here. Blue, blue wallpaper. Very cool. And we got yellow wallpaper in this room. Uh, window... Ventilator, bed, dresser. Nice. Yeah, it feels like kind of a, a regular house too, and that that is that is uh, that is really cool. So when I spawned it, I knew I had a basement, so I got to figure out how do you get to the basement here. What do we got over here. Okay, the back porch. Got to have that. You can see it would go underneath the steps. Ah, it does, right here. Okay, so th so this part you won't see. This is the ground that it's going to spawn through. But as soon as I get through that layer, then you then you got the full basement here. Oh, check it out. The uh, the brick, the like cinder block uh, brick walls, uh, very appropriate for a, a basement. Got an armor locker, O2. Uh, interesting, uh, I don't know, cooking place. Well, that's part of the, the chimney. It goes up through the fireplace, right out to the chimney here. That yeah, that's cool. 
it's cool it actually yeah it all lines up too and uh oh we got a storage control over here 96k storage controller and our generator fuel o2 uh main cpu core ventilator there clone chamber a couple of bookshelves cool looking uh staircase yeah, it's neat. I just, uh, you know, it's one of those things that uh, I I, uh, I like to see this, and I like the shaping on this too. It's, um, uh, you know, although being like a a house in the game, it's it's fairly complex on the uh, the block work on here, and uh, the the use of texturing on here really uh, really does well. I mean, it, uh, I mean, just look at it from a little ways away, and it looks amazingly realistic. Um, and that's hard to do with CV blocks or big blocks, especially. Um, and having, you know, not the right blocks for a lot of things that you'd possibly want to do with a house. But uh, that is that is uh, that is really cool. So anyway, that is all I've got for today. I just wanted to uh, do this video because I missed it uh, the week of Christmas. These were the uh, the creations that were picked out then. Um, and I'll have a, uh, uh, this Friday, again, I'll do a regular one uh, showing all the uh, new creations of this week. Um, and one other thing, too, there was a little bit of thing on how I pick creations. Um, my general stance is, is, yes, I usually pick on, on a given week five of the six creations uh, that, that appear on the spotlight. Now, I typically don't vote for any of these um until i you know or anything like that so it's basically like the community picks i didn't really want to be like the judge and the jury and stuff so the community picked that whatever the community picks shows up there but i usually also like to uh, take uh, one creation and take a look at new releases and pick something out of new releases around that you know that that same week time frame in there um, just maybe something that, that catches my eye, maybe uh, a lot, oftentimes something by, you know, an author that, you know, um, might, you know, might not be as popular or people will check out their stuff, but it, it's of good quality and, and it should be recognized, uh, that kind of thing. So that, that's my general way that I, that I do this. Um, I mean, if you got a better way, I'm, I'm open to suggestion. I'm not, I just, I don't want to like run around and, and decide what uh, I think should be seen or not seen. I'm, I'm just trying to kind of leave that up to you guys, and I'm just just looking at stuff. Um, and, and not all the time. I mean, it, there's usually more creations in the spotlight in a given week, too, and I really don't like to uh, exceed six um, in a video. So that's kind of, you know, so I can't pick everything, and especially I, I'm since I'm only picking five, since I want to pick one out of new releases, that's just my my way of doing it right now. I'm not saying it's the best way or or necessarily even the right way. It's just I if you got any suggestions on a better way to make picks for uh, these videos, you know, let let me know. And of course, of course, I want to also you know find you know some of the, the the nicest looking creations for that that week time frame. You know, um, some of the uh, the more elaborate, uh, higher detailed. Uh, creations in a given week there could be hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of new release creations um, but you know I think most people want to see the, 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 the nicest of the bunch I mean that's that's typically uh, it too and often a lot of them get overlooked I mean there's uh, I'll have to do a backtrack at some point in time again and try to look at creations that I just 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 completely uh, my, my, my radar did not catch uh, essentially I just didn't see them so um, here and there, I'll try to do that this year again, just to take a look around. Uh, it will require a little bit more in-depth uh, roaming around through the workshop, um, but just try to find things that were missed, you know, some uh, some really nice uh, creations that just totally got overlooked. It really sucks when that happens, and all I can say as a community, obviously, um, my, my number one rule is first, never downrate anybody. Um, all this stuff is free. They didn't have to release it. Even if it's not a uh, what you what you would consider to be a uh, wonderful, super awesome creation, um, you know everybody learns. Everybody uh, everybody learns, and if uh, just don't downrate people. I, I, there's it's free. I mean, so definitely don't do that. And number uh, 
Number two, just, you know, be honest. You know, if you like a creation, yeah, give them a thumbs up. You know, if, if, you, if, if you think it's, eh, just leave it alone. Don't, don't, don't downrate it. Um, I don't think there's any ever reason or any reasons to ever downrate a creation unless, unless it's re something really, really crazy with it um, uh, to, to warrant that. And then you should actually, if it's that bad, then you probably ought to just, you know, uh, report it to Steam services or, or something like that, and then they can look at it. And that would have to be something that's really pr provocative or uh, exceptionally bad or cruel or something, you know. But other than that, um, that's that, that's kind of my view about that. And I haven't really mentioned how I look at these in a while. Um, and, and again, if you got any better suggestions on how to pick uh, creations for this, let me know. But right now, I, I am largely dependent on the spotlight, and of course, that one pick that I'm that I'm doing just kind of on a whim in new releases. So that's my, been my uh, method. Anyway, you all have yourself a, a great uh, a great week. I'll have another video like this uh, this Friday uh, with all the the new stuff that's in the workshop, probably now or be 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 released before then. So anyway, you all have yourself a great day and I'll talk to you later.